everybody. <laughs> a little review from uh, yesterday. Uh, I'm an artist, so I'm doing art. This is art, in case you didn't notice. Um, I'm a word artist, so I'm using the word. Every, every definition I'm giving you is found uh, beginning in the King James Bible, and we use Strong's Concordance and uh, Thayer's Greek English Lexicon. These are study tools that every, every student of the word needs to use and be familiar with. So, and then we also use the translations to give us some really beautiful, spicy language. Okay? So, what this is all about, this is uh, Romans 6, 7, and 8 through the language of marriage. Okay, I was not doing a study on marriage. Okay, I did not go to the Bible and start looking up, you know, every, you know, every, uh, yeah, every every verse on marriage. For the last 22 years, our our clear focus has been on Jesus Christ and Him crucified. It's very simple, but it's very, um, it's very engaging. If you, if you let the revelation of the cross, if you let him, the revelation of the cross will consume you. It will literally eat you up, and you will, you will be uh, living in another realm, okay? You all are welcome to move over and to move in if you like, okay? Please, you don't have to reserve these seats for this meeting. You can sit down here, and I like you to interact. I like you to, to laugh, to shout, to scream, to go, whoa! Okay, however you like to. We, we give you permission. You are the bride of Christ, and uh, he, he likes your responses. Wow. Wow. So, the, uh, where is my stuff here? The, and then another refresher, uh, the, the words that we're looking for from the Greek um, language are words that uh, use, use the prefix ko, C-O. In the, in the Greek, it's sun or S-U-N. And that, that small, insignificant, uh, it's like the little pebble that took Goliath down, okay? It could be, it could look very insignificant and eh, don't make such a big deal about it. Except I am making a big deal about it because it represents union with Christ. So as we saw yesterday, we are in union with him in our baptism. We're in union with him. This is co uh, uh co-buried, this is co-planted, this is co-crucified, this is co-live and co-die. We have uh, union with Christ, we have fruit, okay? That's, that's in one chapter. Then we go over here to Romans 7. What is this all about? Who remembers this? You can read? Can you read? <laughs> you can't read? Married to another, capital A. And just in case we don't know who that another is, is this, okay. Um, it is the one who rose from the dead, okay? And in several translations, it's actually capitalized, okay? So, and right here, this whole, this whole thing is Death released you from your former relationship. Okay, this is just a quick synopsis for those who were not here yesterday. Death releases you from a former relationship that produced nothing but rotten, corrupt fruit. Okay? Because of the death of Christ, he became cursed beyond measure. Okay, that's from Galatians 3:13. Uh, curse beyond measure to release you from that. So now you are blessed beyond measure. Blessed beyond comprehension is what I would say. It, 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 it's, it's, it's almost unthinkable. Because who's done anything to deserve that, that release? And now you are released 
and able to belong to someone else, to the one who was raised from the dead. Isn't that good news? Is that good news? Woo! Yeah, so I said at this moment, suddenly something happened, okay? Let me read this. We're also um, mixing in the romance of uh, Song of Solomon, okay? So just to kind of stir up that atmosphere again, okay? <laughs> yeah, because uh, this, you know, what's going on here, Romans 6, 7, and 8 has, especially Romans 7, has been called the theological knot of the entire New Testament. So we're going to unravel that knot. So you can tie the knot with the one who rose from the dead. <laughs> That's kind of fun, isn't it? I'm reading from the most amazing song of all, the Passion Translation. There is no one like him. I love sitting under his grace shadow. With great delight I dwell here, enjoying the sweet taste of his pleasant and delicious fruit. What bliss is this? <laughs> bliss. Bliss literally means the ecstasy of our salvation. It's a word that was almost lost from our language, but somehow we discovered it and we're broadcasting it and publishing it. And there you go. You know where we found it? In the Bible. I found it in the James Moffat translation. Yeah, I was reading the concordance in the back one day, just buzzing through the, you know, and there I see a word, bliss, what is that? So I started an investigation. This was probably at least 10, 12 years ago. Yeah, and there it was all over the place. We just didn't notice it. It was there, it was there. It's even in the Amplified Bible. Yeah. How many read the Amplified Bible? Yeah, you can open to Romans 8, uh, uh, which one, which one, Is it 17 or 15? Anyway, we're going to get there today. It's there in that Bible, and when you see it, you go, oh my goodness, I never connected, but it literally means ecstasy of salvation. Isn't that amazing? That, that's bigger than joy. That's like intoxication. That's like wandering around like, whoa. Yeah, it might, people might think you need help. You know, people might be concerned if they see you coming their direction, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm shopping in the grocery store, you know, and I'm trying to mind my own business, and there you go, turn your head. Oh, Bliss uh, Half and Half, or Bliss Coffee Mate. Oh my goodness, I have to buy this. You know, and you know, so then you get a little bliss attack in public. In the grocery store, down the candy aisle, there's bliss chocolate. I'm shopping at nine o'clock in the morning. We're having guests over one evening, and there I'm going, chocolate, chocolate. <gasps> bliss chocolate. Oh my good. And then you turn it over and it says, it's like almost oh, sinfully delicious. I'm going, well, they're kind of in that language, you know, but uh, bliss. Oh, the bliss of those who know their sins have been forgiven and completely buried away. Oh, not just forgiven. This is more than forgiveness. Woo, Jesus. What bliss this is. And I turn the page. Suddenly, he transported me to his house of wine. That's what the Bible says. Sudden transportation to his house of wine. I hope you know what to do when you get there. Sudden transportation, how did I get here? You're in, oh, you're in a wine cellar. And you look at him and you're like, is there some mistake? You, you expect me to drink all of that? <laughs> and there's more, absolutely, absolutely. Suddenly transported to his house of wine. Who is this that is coming up out of the wilderness, leaning on her beloved? Who is this? Someone will give you a look. Who do you think you are? 
You go, uh, why don't you talk to him? Because I'm just leaning. Let's, let's practice a lean, okay? Let's just practice, because maybe some of you are just a little too, ooh, you know? Lean, lean all of your weight on your beloved. There you go. Little love birds, their heads together, yeah. We are going to read the word also with a cross-reference, a big cross-reference, okay? So right now, because of this curse beyond measure, we are going here, and we're just going to consider the surrounding evidence because this is a cross-reference, all of eight. It would be no different than going to Isaiah 53 and reading the whole thing. You put something on pause, and you go to another portion of the word and investigate and see what treasures you can bring back and display, okay? So if we remember from yesterday, there, oh, let me read this, Cotton Patch Gospel. Who knows what this verse 8, 1 says? Oh, see, we all learned that one really fast, right? Because that's like, that, that's a, that, that saves everything. Wow. Whoa, some fresh air. Yeah, no condemnation. Oh, listen to this. There is no charge outstanding against those who are in wedlock to Jesus Christ. Oh, that's what that says. Oh my goodness, this tripping over that. No condemnation, no accusation, no blame, no denouncement, no disapproval, no, report, no reproach. For those who are in union with Christ, okay, union, no condo, no condo. For those in union, this verse one, it's all we have to remember. Arthur S. Way, God's New Covenant, New English, TEV, Complete Jewish, Good Speed, Passion Translation says those who are joined in life union with Christ. That's why there's no condemnation. Oh my goodness. This is a cross reference. Do -do 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 -do. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, and this is a suddenly, you're like, how did we get there? Those who belong to Christ. There's no condemnation for those who belong to Christ. For those who have been made one with him. Amen. That's right. You can go cheers too. That's another way of saying amen. Ha ha ha. Song of Solomon 2.4. He brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. That's King James. Here we are, passion translation. Suddenly he transported me to his house of wine. My eyes opened to see his unfurled banner of victory. It's his unrelenting love written on the flag flying over my heart. I am overwhelmed and undone. Here's the basic Bible, basic, uh, Bible in basic English. He took me to the house of wine and his flag over me was love. Here's the English Standard Version. He brought me to the banqueting house, and in parentheses, it says Hebrew, house of wine, and his banner over me is love. So in the Hebrew, it literally is house of wine. Wine garden, uh, you know, banqueting hall of wine. This is the wine of his blood. He poured it out for his bride. It's a very exclusive wine. It's reserved just for you. Ooh, are you drinking it? Are you drinking it? Do we need to have a drinking lesson? Yeah, okay, put your head back as far as you can. This would be leaning also, lean. Open your mouth and receive into your being his love wine, his spirit, his, his joy, his, his, own, his very own presence, his very own presence. Woo! Ho, ho, ho! 
Yeah, and just when you think you've had enough, what does he say? Oh, darling, there's more. Oh, oh, oh don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, we've been drinking this for 22 years. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit has never told me, oh, you've had enough, young lady. <laughs> no, never. He always comes on the side and goes, hey, you want some more? <laughs> I'm like already in trouble. <laughs> no, people are looking at me. Oh, he goes. Pff. The Message Bible, he took me home with him for a festive meal, but his eyes feasted on me. Oh! Wow, it's his unrelenting love, and he is going to chase you down and keep saying these kind of things to you until you blush. Yeah, he do, why he's not going to stop. Wow, expanded Bible. He took me to the banquet room, the house of wine, and his banner over me is love. His love for her is well known. Wow, one says wine cellar. He brought me into the house of wine. Anyway, it's a place of a lot, a lot, a lot of wine. Ooh, so I kind of need to move stuff around here, I think. I'm going to put this here. Because hmm. <laughs> this water I'm kind of nervous about. Okay. Whoa, so we are looking for words that communicate to us union, dwelling, belonging, being made one, okay? Romans 8, uh, 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. The spirit of God dwells in you. So that word means, what is that? This is, ver this is verse 9, yes. Dwell means cohabit. That's what it means. That's from, that's from the a, a Greek lexicon. You don't have to speak Greek. You just know how to look up words, like a dictionary. Kind of have to know how to spell a little, but it's, it's made easy. It's user-friendly. How many use a concordance? Yay. On a daily basis? Hey, hey. Ha, ha, ha. Keep your drinking habits up. <laughs> yeah, just keep it up. <laughs> wow, those who, wow. There's something about belonging to Christ. Okay, this might be a little side issue, but it really isn't because something powerful has already taken place for you on your behalf because you belong to him. Who belongs to Christ in this room? Ho! Oh! Belonging to Christ. They that are Christ's, this is Galatians 5, 24, they that are Christ, those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and lusts, the desires, the natural evil desires, the affections, self-indulgent passions. What? Now, we're, we're in the house of wine, okay? So everything is possible. It's all possible. The flesh has been crucified on behalf of those who belong to Christ. Where did it happen? Over here, over here, dead, connected with Christ in union with his death. What do you think died? What do you think died? It was the old you, okay? With all, with all the trappings and the fineries. Old, all the old. All you have now is just a ghost shadow program, a phantom program left of what it was. Doesn't belong to you. It's not your identity. It's not your identity. Ooh, I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself here. Okay, here's verse uh, nine. If the Spirit of God, okay, if He dwells in you, um, okay, if Christ, Christ is in you, Christ is in you, Christ lives in you, verse 11, the Spirit dwells in you two times. What does the word dwell mean? Cohabit. Good students, good students, you're paying attention. 
two times. It says co, cohabit. That's shoo. cohabit. Love it. Here we are. Now we're having a little bliss kiss. Okay, verse 15. Here we are. A uh, bliss in the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father. Wow! It, it, you're, it's a condition of bliss that He has made you able to call Him Father. Do you get it? Father. In the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father. That means He has, he has received you as a son or a daughter. Oh my goodness, can we say that? Abba, Father, Daddy, Abba, Daddy, Father, thank you. Woo! Do you understand that's a miracle or are you, are you downplaying that? Because it's just not that. You know. Yeah, you know, I know. I got that one a long time ago. <laughs> But it, it, we, call, we call this, a, this is a bliss kiss. Yeah, um, bliss, it's like a candy, it's like a chocolate candy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, in verse 16, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. And that means to testify jointly, okay? It means to co-witness. The Holy Ghost co-witnesses with you. It's actually a legal term and it's uh, uh, corroborate. So anyone in the legal system would know that they need two witnesses to tell the same story. Okay, and that's what the Holy Ghost does with you and for you. He, he cooperates your testimony. Yes, you are a son. Yes, you are a daughter. Wow. Yes. Wow, cooperate. So that's verse 16. That's, uh, so to co-witness. Co-witness. Verse 17, there are three co-words in this verse. Okay, there's co-heir. We're a co-heir with Christ. It's actually the first place I saw that in a Bible was the NIV translation. Anyone have an NIV? Okay, if you have it on you, you can just look it up right now and corroborate my testimony. So... And, and that was the only one I saw, except until this last year, a whole flood gate has opened up for me. And I've discovered in the Orthodox Jewish Bible, the Expanded Bible, the International Standard, the Berean Study Bible, the Aramaic in Plain English, the Weymouth, the Jerusalem Fenton, uh, Exegesis, and the Holman Christian Standard. They all use that language, co-heir, and I'm like, well, that's exciting, but how come they're not using this? I don't know, I guess it's just up to the committee. It's a committee decision. So he goes, don't tell them that stuff. Tell them the co-heir, because that's kind of like so far in the future. You, you, you have to actually make it to heaven to be a co-heir, so you know. We'll just put that carrot out there in front of them. I don't know. <laughs> But we cannot hide the truth once you see it. Once you see it. Oh, my goodness. It's all you can think about and talk about and share with family and friends. Isn't that great? Okay. The next word here in this verse is co-suffer. Co-suffer. See? Someone's going, see, I knew it. There you go. This is too good to be true. We got to co-suffer. Mm-hmm. Experience pain jointly. So does that mean that Jesus wants you to experience all the physical pain that he experienced? No, it doesn't. Very good. Very good. But some professional religionists might want you to believe something else. Okay, here is a beautiful translation of this verse. It, it actually means to experience pain jointly, but it also means to sympathize, uh, to sympathize uh, with the expectation of relieving pain and distress. Ooh, here is the translation from the Passion 
by Dr. Brian Simmons. He translates this co-suffering as accepting his sufferings as your own. Wow! Do you get the import of that? Accepting Christ's sufferings as your own. Okay? Otherwise, you you know, I'm not saying that there isn't suffering for believers or, you know, persecutions or, um, you know, martyrs. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying right now at this moment, would you qualify yourself as suffering that Christ took your suffering and he's giving it to you as a gift. That, that, that's, that's, like, that's like drop all your little programs, okay? Boom! <laughs> that's a shut your mouth, you know, conclusion. Are you, can you accept Jesus Christ's sufferings as your own and rest in the fullness of that, the completeness of that, and not feel condemned for not suffering? Wow, amen. Look at this guy. He knows what's going on. Yeah, this is Aaron's father. This is Aaron's father. She comes from a rich heritage. He is, he, he's the, the papa, the daddy in the uh, Manhattan school. He's always there serving. He serves, he wraps cords, he tears down equipment, hauls it. Goodness. Yeah, that's the kind of, you know, example in life you want to follow. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> so you can amen all you want. Amen and hallelujah. Woo. Co-glorified. Okay, co-glorified to exalt to dignity and company with, to share his glory to share his splendor, co-glorified in the Passion Translation. See, see it, the other half that had trouble with no suffering, now you're having trouble with co-glorified. What? You know, it, it all offends. It all offends. I love it. Co, did I write that? Co-suffering? So co-glorified. Co-glorified. Lifted to splendor of life as his own sons. He lifts you. He lifts you. Who can be compared to the Lord our God who is enthroned on high? Far below him are the heavens and the earth. He stoops to look and he lifts the poor from the dirt and the needy from the garbage dump. And he sets them among princes. Even the princes of his own people. You're co-seated right now. Come on, cheers. This, it, that's the psalm. That's Psalm 113. That's the halal, the beginning of the halal. That's the hymn he sang on the night he was betrayed. He sang for your salvation. He sang over you. This is a song. This is a song. This is a love song. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. Shamba. He did everything he needed to do so he could give you his glory. Wow. If that offends you, pardon me. <laughs> the whole creation groaneth together. That's co-moan or sighing. You co-sigh. You go, oh. Let's practice. I know you know how to moan. Give me a good moan. <laughs> oh, I know how to moan. <laughs> And we travail in pain together. We have pangs and we sympathize in expectation of relief from sufferings. It's cold travaileth. All of creation is moaning and groaning. And just like you, ah, get me out of here. <laughs> Except guess what? We have a few short moments on this planet to know him by faith. 
So why would you want to step out of here so fast? You have few short moments to know him only by faith. My goodness. Whoa, Russell, just get me out of here. He goes, no, you stay there. <laughs> no worries, you'll be offended sooner or later if you haven't been already. I don't know. <laughs> See what happens when you just drink the new wine all the time? You need to drink until you see things. <gasps> oh, the, the spirit, did, so did I write that down? 22? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, um, and he, he, he co-sighs with us. He co-sighs, he groans with us. The spirit helps our infirmities. He cooperates with us in, in our feebleness of body and mind. He goes, you, guys, get, 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 the, get the reality. You don't even know what, how to pray. <laughs> All you intercessors, because you don't even know how to pray. Let me pray for you and with you and through you. Let me groan and sigh and go, <gasps> Read it your Bible. You're, you're kind of like, wow, that, that's, a little, that's a little insulting, isn't it? I mean, I'm, I'm a heavy-duty category of the, you know, intercessor, intercession. I know all the right words to say. Yeah, but, well, most often you don't. So a sigh or a moan or a groan will do. He understands what, what's going on, you know. He can go, ah, in Jesus' name. <laughs> 20, 26. The, the, yeah, so he, he cooperates. That's actually, yeah, he cooperates. He co helps. Um, all things, we all know this one too, right? Especially during the hard times, all things work together for those who are called according to his purpose. Um, fellow worker, uh, Jerusalem Bible says we cooperate. All things cooperate. Uh, the, oh, oh, what's that one? Uh, oh, gee, oh, oh, Orthodox Jewish Bible also says cooperates. I'm sure there's more, but can you imagine me collecting all this stuff on my own? <laughs> you know, it takes time. It takes time. We do a thorough dig. Yeah. So, y'all can help me whenever you want. So, this is a lovely, uh, when I studied this verse, I, each word, I just fillet out each word, and then I read it through as many translations as I have at my disposal. So, here is what, so because it's a co-word, okay, so we're saying co, co, that's 28, yeah, that's 20, co-operate. Wow, that's, this, remember, this is a cross-reference, we're just, we haven't stopped yet, because we're, we're going to land pretty soon, but it's, wow, it's so good. Everything cooperates for those who love God and are invited in accordance with his proposal. This is a proposal. Did I forget to tell you that's the name of this, this thing? Hey, just, no worry, those theologians out there, it's a suggestion. Okay, a proposal. Well, what if, what if she says no, you know? A guy usually proposes to the girl, what if she says no? Yeah. Anyway, anyone getting ready to propose to somebody? Could we pray for you? <laughs> Who's getting ready? I saw a hand. We will, oh, we, we, we won't, the camera's not on you, so no worries, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ay, 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 ay. But that's what, that's what it means. In it, everything works together for the, the, the good of those who he's called according to his will. And the definition is proposal. It's right there in the dictionary. I'm not making this stuff up. You know, so this is a re-rendering of that same verse. Everything cooperates for those who love God and are invited in accordance with his proposal. Okay, verse 29, uh, we're conformed to be in the image of his son. The word conformed is jointly formed or co-formed. 
Wow, having the same form as another, because uh, he is not ashamed to call you his brethren or sister. And he's not ashamed. <laughs> Ooh, woo -hoo -hoo. Did I write that? 29. Oh, I wrote the number, but not the word. Okay, conform, conform. Verse 32, the father in union with the son in union. The father and the son in union, they're in total union about freely giving you all things. Don't make him look stingy. Oh, that's why you, you need to learn how to drink. <laughs> you know. Okay, here's another practice lesson. Put your arms out as wide as you can. Put your head back, another leaning, open your mouth. Now take a drink. I mean, drink like you mean it. <laughs> Woo! How difficult is that? What, what have we done with this gospel of good news? You know, what have we done with it? How, how, did, it, how did we end up grumpy or, you know, stuck? How, how did we end up going, ugh? You know. Wow. Okay, in union with the sun, so they're, they're actually happy. And here's verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of God? That word separate, do you know what that means? This is, this is just the most delicious, delightful discoveries. It says, place room between, part, go away, separate, divide. In the Thayer, well, that's, the, that's the concordance, Strong's concordance. Here's the Thayer's. That's why it's important to go one layer deeper and see how that word opens up. It means to leave a husband or a wife or it means divorce. Who will divorce us from the love of God? See, that's marriage language. But if you, you know, it's separate, so no, divorce. Ha 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 how do you like that? And, Verse 39, nothing shall separate us from the love of God which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So again, at the last verse of this is no divorce. And the way I look at it is heaven is pledging to never divorce us. The weight of this, uh, this thing is not on your shoulders. It's not on you to say, I will never divorce the Lord. No, it's just not about you. It's about him. It's about the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, what they have done to rescue you and to clothe you. To rip those filthy rags of self-righteousness off of you and redress you in a moment's time. You don't even have to go, wow! It's no time. No, don't, don't let religion parade you around like you're a little trophy. Don't let religion go, oh, look at this. this, this what, that's what they did in Galatia. Those nice, happy circumcisers, they just, wanted, they just wanted to get all them guys circumcised so they can just string them around and go, oh, look at these guys, look at, you know. They just wanted to boast in their own fleshly achievements. Paul says, God forbid that I shall boast in anything or anyone except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, the world is crucified to me and I to the world. Finish. And he says, I don't want to talk to any, uh, this is such low level stuff, I don't even want to deal with this anymore. Oh, thank God for the apostle Paul. Oh my goodness, in case you haven't noticed, he started, he started his dissertations with the death of Jesus Christ. That's where Paul started. Jesus, it's a good place for you to start. Woo, it's not where you're gonna end up, it's where you start. 
You start in union with him. Someone forgot to tell me that, by the way. Wow. So we want to make sure no one forgets to tell you, okay? Yay! Okay, so now, uh, am, 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 yeah, I'm doing right. Okay, here we go. La, 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 la. So uh, we are not ignoring the rest of this. See, it's a blank canvas. I'm going to fill it in for you, okay? Can you see? Can you see my artwork? Okay, good. Uh, we can auction this off after for anyone who likes. You can buy the entire board. But we have to get the price to, you know, replace the board. So, but feel free if you want an original Coco. Uh, does anyone get why my name is Coco? Oh, hello. <laughs> I kind of added it to my name because I go, wow. It was an identity change, you know? So my friends call me Coco. Now, um, oh, okay, wow, my papers are so wrinkly, but this is real. That's really what I do. <laughs> okay, well, we kind of have some bad news, but it's gonna get good right away. Okay, so no, no, one, no, one, no one get offended, okay, nobody. Uh, well, I'll start with the good news. Well, the Message Bible in Romans 7, 5 says, we are no longer shackled to that domineering mate of sin. See, that's, that's relationship, but it's gone bad, okay? It might have started out good, but quickly, went bad, okay, shackled to a domineering mate of sin. Oh my goodness, mate of sin. Um, and the verse before that says, uh, we had nothing to show for our life in the past, and this is spiritually speaking, nobody would feel condemned or anything, okay? He took your condemnation on his own body on the tree. Yahoo! Okay, the Message Bible uh, says we had nothing to show before Christ except miscarriages and stillbirths. That's fruit unto death, okay? This guy says it in a language, we go, whoa, whoa, no stillbirths, you know. Verse 11. Here, here's a word, uh, I looked up, uh, Paul said, I was deceived, I was deceived, deceived, you know what that means? To seduce, holy. So we have seduction going on here, seduction, see that's a word, that's a bad relationship word, right? So seduction, that's verse 11, what's 13? Oh, yeah, what's this? Oh, it's moving, okay. Um, Uh, okay, no, I'm going to 14. 14, ho, oh, ho, ho, the word sold. I'm carnal, sold unto sin. Okay, mo most people are, most theological arguments happen in this region, okay? And they're trying to decipher when was Paul writing, what time frame was he writing about in his life? And I asked another question. I go, who is this guy? Who is this Roman seven man? I have a little book. I think it's out in the back. Yeah. And they're just one-liners. No worry. It's not a heavy read. You could probably read it in 10 minutes. Yeah. Just one little, one little suggestion, one little thought on each page. Who is this Roman seven man? Yeah. And it's, it's, the, it's the culmination of my three-year meditation uh, with the Lord on and asking that question. Who is he? Who is this creature? He dropped me an answer. I'm walking through an airport and he'd drop a bomb on me. You know, here's the Roman seven man. And he'd remind me of a scripture someplace. Here's a description of him. So I go, oh, 
we're in public, Lord. We're in public, but I gotta write this down really fast and grab a pen and I write it on my hand. Because I'm like, can you just put this in Winnie language? Just, just my language. I, I never meant to share it with an audience. You know, it's just Winnie language. You know, I just want to comprehend. I'm a believer and I have a right to know what's going on here. Okay? I can consider the opinions of others, but hey, hey, if you're a believer, Holy Ghost wants to bring you to a conclusion. Wow. Wow. That's why this is called the proposal. Remember? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sold under sin. Are we good? Oh, we're doing good. Sold under sin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Sold under sin to traffic. By traveling, that is to dispose of as merchandise or into slavery. This is trafficking. Are, are, you, are you being trafficked by anyone? That was, the, that, was the, <laughs> that was the result of your life without Christ. You were being trafficked. You were. You didn't even know it. He gives you the illusion of independence. Oh, ho, ho. It's an illusionary independence where humanity stands and says, I will be responsible for my own life. I will live my own way. Well, who's behind that? Who's fueling that stuff? Whoa! Sold unto sin to traffic by traveling, that is to dispose of as merchandise or into slavery. When I saw that word, I, uh, next time I saw Patricia King, I got out my concordance and I showed her, I said, Patricia, you got to look at this word. It's so unbelievable because she is, uh, we had been spending a lot of time with her and her, the passion of her heart um, is, uh, you know, uh, child trafficking and to stop that. So she has a lot of focus in uh, Asia, in Burma, in Thailand. And, you know, so the... You know, but to comprehend her, her passion, her fire to rescue these children who are being trafficked for, you know, uh, sex industry, um, as child soldiers, um, you know, just horrendous things. She's not going to, okay, do all this rescue and bring them to the border of the country and say, okay, next time don't be so stupid. You know what I mean? Well, that's the best religion has to offer. No, she will take them to a safe house where those people cannot get their hands on this child anymore. Or, or what kind of mother would she be? What kind of heart, you know? You know what I'm saying? So don't let religion tell you, oh, you, you've just been halfway rescued, but the rest is up to you. And we don't want you to be stupid. Yeah. Remember, he says, are you ignorant? Have you forgotten? Very beginning. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hello out there. You know? You don't be ignorant about this, about your death with Christ. You can't be. Okay? So, co-sold under sin. That's right. Okay, verse 17. Cohabit with sin. Cohabiting with sin. Dwelling with sin. Remember the word dwell? That's what it means, cohabiting with sin. This creature is going, I, I'm cohabiting with sin. Well, lovely bride of Christ. <laughs> what meaneth that? Cohabit with no good. Verse 18, no good. Oh, verse 19, this is fun. Uh, For the good that I would, I do. I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. It's a play on words, right? Because when you get married, you go, I do. <laughs> the first I do is a one-time action. The second I do, you don't see how, do you see how simple this gets? I'm going, I'm going to look up the word I do. Because just pretend you don't know what it means. Okay, and I was surprised to find out that it means 
to practice and perform evil repeatedly or habitually. What? So I can't do one single good act, and all I can do is practice and perform evil repeatedly or habitually. That's pretty scary, isn't it? And because often we have been told, uh, "Hey, who do you think you are? Get back here. This is your identity." But we have the tools to help you out. You have to. You have to commit. You got to commit for a long time. We're not sure you have what it takes, and that's part of the course, you know. But whoa! And we're like, really? Okay. Whoa! That's where that moaning comes from. <laughs> Verse twenty: cohabit with sin, cohabit with sin, cohabit with evil. Evil is present with me. Verse twenty-one: evil, evil. Because that's no longer I. <laughs> yeah, doesn't Paul say something like that someplace else? No longer I, but Christ. This creature is screaming. It's no longer I, but evil in me, sin in me. What are? Are you a victim or are you a bride? Are you a victim or a bride? You don't know what part to play in this wrestling match. It, it's one, it's a fake wrestling match, okay? It's a fake one. It's one of those fake ones. But that's fake. Yeah, you, you bought the T-shirt. You went. You bought tickets. You're in. You're, you're looking at the. It's a fake thing. Now I know there are real. There are real wrestlers, uh, but they're they're equally paired. Okay, they're equally matched, or it wouldn't be a fair fight. Correct. Are you tracking with me, or did I, I? I lost something. Wrestling match, anyway.、Um, thank you, Jim. <laughs> Amen. Anyway, we could maybe discuss that later, okay?、Um, because, but, but seriously, the Holy Ghost, Jesus Christ, and the Father are not equally matched with the enemy. Okay, that's the point. There's not an equal match going on. The case has already been decided.、Um, so all he has to really operate with is illusion, deception. Yeah, you know. But he's a slow mover, so you can, you know. Whoa! <laughs> time for a drink. Time for a drink. Okay, a big one. Put your arms out. Get a little heavy in here. Put your arms out. Do your lean. Practice the lean. Ha 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 ha! Oh, oh! We receive your love wine. We receive your love wine. Thank you. Thank you. That we are not the wretched, unhappy man of the Romans here. Who will rescue me from the body of this death? There's an illusion to、uh, punishment of a criminal that they would they would tie a dead corpse onto the back of the criminal and let him go free and wander. So he would eventually die a slow, painful death of the. Con- You know, contagion from the dead body. One one very cruel tyrant would bind them face to face, limb to limb, and anybody they could cry for help all they wanted, but anyone that came to their rescue, the same fate would happen to them. Yeah, wow. So this right here, this is the I, me, my zone. Oh, schizophrenic man that I am! Who will deliver me from this split within my person? I'm quoting Ben Campbell Johnson. This last verse. Oh, schizophrenic man that I am! Who will deliver me from this split within my person? Until he does, I will remain in the contradiction of serving him in part of me and denying him in the other. Oh! Do not be caught denying Christ. Do not be caught denying His finished work on the cross. That's the complete, perfect rescue for you. Woo! 
Your part is to participate in it, to rejoice, to enjoy, to share that good news with others. There's no finger pointing, it's only oy ay ay. Wow. There's nothing here, but it's, it's an abusive relationship. It's fruitless, there's rotten fruit, it's captivity, it's the grave, it's wilderness, it's joyless, in case you didn't notice. It's a trap, it's a ditch, it's a slavery, it's, it's a, it, estrangement, it's contradictions. It's the pit of destruction. It's worse than the miry clay. It's the human trafficking zone. It's the no longer I zone, but sin zone. Wow. Just some descriptive words. Um, could, could we show that slide? Because I would like you to get a visual besides my artwork. Are, are we ready? Hey! Oh. So let me say, um, any, any single girls in here, do not marry a man like that. You will live in nothing but confusion because you don't know. Is he the big, strong believer or the little boy? And the little. Look at that! Isn't that ridiculous? I, 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 I just I laughed my head off when I saw that. There, I go. That is the. Ex that's the family portrait of the Roman Seven Man. That's him. Wow, ha <laughs> ha looking good. Wow. Yeah, don't let religion fool you, okay? So thank you, we can take that picture down, I think, now. Because um, we're gonna wrap this up. Um, and, you know, the question is, the question is, if anyone hasn't figured anything out yet, hello, boom. Uh, <laughs> I asked the Lord, how do we get safely from Romans 6 to 8 without falling into this pit? You know what he said to me? Right in front of everybody, he goes, take the marriage bridge. I go, oh, okay, here we go. Woo! That, 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 you see the bridge? You see the bridge? This, the, you, this is the marriage bridge. You're married to another. The, 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 the cross beam here is... Christ became cursed beyond measure. It's all based on his death. This, this here, union, union, union. Over here, no divorce. Woo! What in the world? The bridge in a song is a unique passage. It breathes life into the music. It provides a new melody. It deepens musical meaning. It takes the song in a new direction. Okay? Because you're married to another, that's why there's no condemnation. But we have been traditionally taught, and you can, you can retract your teachings at any moment, any pastors or teachers or preachers out there. <laughs> No, con we have been traditionally taught this is the identity of the believer, but hold on because there's fresh air coming. If you can just pull yourself up, just keep reading. Just don't, don't stop. Just keep going. Just pull, pull yourself up and get the fresh air. Get smell. Oh, he's not condemning me for living like this. Whoa. That's how we have all, most of us, unless you've heard otherwise, have been taught, okay? And I think that is damaging, okay? Um, and again, it's a proposal, because we're talking about a marriage with the bridegroom. It's all in marriage language, okay? So here we have, there's no condemnation for those who are in wedlock with Jesus Christ. If you know union with him, if you know being made one with him, joining him in what he did for you, then this is an impossibility for you. Impossible. This, this, is not, this is not the language of the bride of Christ. It's not. It's just not. So it's not your identity. Ooh. 
takes the song in a new direction. Ha 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 ha! It's fragile in nature. I think our faith is very, it's very gentle, because it, it's childlike. Okay, that's why that, that holds us accountable to one another to speak the truth. Okay, in love, and remember who you're talking to. You're talking to the bride of Christ. Okay, so any, any prophetic voice out there should be jumping up and down with joy because you're greater than John the Baptist, who was the friend of the bridegroom. And he said, I rejoice because I hear the bridegroom's voice. I hear his voice. I hear his voice. So the prophetic voice now has to be greater than that, a greater joy than John the Baptist. There is a song being sung over you. You've got to, you know, you've got to retune some things. Uh, did someone ever tell you the honeymoon is over? Hey, yo, you've been born again, what? A month? The honeymoon's over. Get to work. See, marriage language. They use, it's marriage language. They just want workers. They want slaves. They want slaves. Do you hear voices? Voices from the past. You know what? Voices that are going, who do you think you are? Those are voices from the old in-laws. Those old in-laws, remember, you were married to something else, but, you know, but hey, the guy died, so I'm free to remarry. But the in-laws, oh, no, honey, oh, oh, honey, we hear you married into money. We, you owe us. And the in-laws are going to pull you back into this, but they're just voices, they're lies. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Yeah. You can't be married to both at the same time. You can't. It ain't legal. We ain't in Utah, right? You can't have multiple choices. Woo! So the yeah, and you know, end result is <laughs> he's saying, uh, you know, we've gone from the shadow. The shadow of the old covenant to the reality of the new because of Christ. And he is saying, let my bride go. Let my bride go. Woo! So I think that's it. And just make sure this is the bridge you don't want to burn. Don't, don't burn that bridge, okay? 